Chatter is one of the single most frustrating things a machinist will ever deal with in his career. Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper and today is my follow-up video to Saturday's video of turning those conveyor rollers. Now, we combated chatter in that thing and there were a lot of things that I tried and I showed in the video uh, what you can do to combat chatter. Uh, one thing I did not try was switching to a negative rake insert, but I figured out what was causing all my chatter this past weekend. Um, so we're going to get into that a little later, but I'm going to talk about all the things I did to combat the chatter. And then a little later in the video, we're going to answer all the viewers' questions and comments. There were a lot of really good ones, so uh, stick around for the rest of this video and we'll get to that. So as many of you saw, this wasn't a simple job of, of just a drum or, you know, something simple, a shaft. This was welded discs of AR400. Um, I believe they were 400, they could have been four, 500, um, but they were AR plate, and that is for wear characteristic. And they were welded on one side of the shaft. So the plate was cut with a big hole that did not fit the shaft well, and then it was welded on one side. So I think that contributed to some of it, but what you saw me do in the video was speeding it up, slowing it down, mostly slowing it down, slowing down to get below the chatter, um, speeding it up when that didn't work, taking deeper cuts, shallower cuts, trying to, to get that chatter out of it, trying to keep it constant tool pressure, um, and it just wasn't cooperating on the tailstock end. So I took the bearing off, flipped it around, and did her on the headstock end. So I was able to do half the shaft, flip it around, do the other half. That worked out great, but the real problem was something else that entirely, um, something that I didn't see coming, um, and I should have because I took care of this problem July of last year. And that problem was right here, my center. Uh, I didn't notice it at the time and it wasn't until I did a job the f this last weekend um, that I had problems with chatter again that normally don't happen. Um, so I started looking at my center because I had bought this in July to replace a used one that I had for years um, and I was getting a lot of chatter and having problems so I checked that one out and I was having a lot of run out on the bearings. So I bought this one, it's a TMX, um, it was not a cheap center at all and I've been using this since July and I started having these problems again. So I decided let's check this thing out. Well first off, that ain't right. And then because of that, we got a lot of end play here and I can feel it, it's clicking. I can throw an indicator on there and show you, but I mean, it's, it's bad. So I opened it up to take a look because a lot of these have an adjusting collar and they use a tapered bearing um, to tighten it up. And I wound up going in deeper because it did not have an adjusting collar. All it has is needle bearings. Needle bearings, a thrust bearing, and then in the back end over here, there's another needle bearing. There is no accommodation for adjustment. There's no point to tighten this up. There's no way this thing could even work right. So TMX really dropped the ball on this guy. Made in Poland, you know, they've had some good products over the years, but this thing is, is the worst I've ever seen. So in order to finish my job on Saturday, I had to use the Morse Taper 4 Mor Live Center from my Monarch lathe, which is a knockoff of a Skoda. Um, I got this from MSC years ago to replace the Skoda that I wore out. Um, and honestly, I've been very happy with this. This is an interstate brand, um, very good. And as you can see, it's got this collar here with the slots. That is to set the bearing tension, the load. Um, you can adjust these, it's wonderful center, um, even for being a cheap one. Um, Shars makes them as well. They're very inexpensive in you know, comparison. But I ordered a Skoda. I ordered a good name brand Skoda Center for the Lion Lathe. So that is coming, um, Morse Taper 5. Um, same setup as this though. They've got the best bearing system, everything. I'm very happy with those centers. This one is, you know, being an interstate from MSC has been a wonderful um, center as well. So I, no complaints there. So that, that really sums up why I was having so many chatter problems um, with that job, or, or a good portion of it. I think we're still gonna have chatter problems on a job like that, but I, the center was definitely a problem. 
So while the center problem, you know, it came gradually, um, it wasn't all at once. I did notice a few things here and there over the last month or so, and I do have videos where I'm using it still um, that'll be coming out uh, in the next month or so. Um, but the real failure was, I noticed it really badly with, with that. Um, so that was the determining factor. It's like, okay, we gotta do something. And so I got through that job. I got through a couple others um, that were just fine, but then that one, I just had to switch it out to get the surface finish I needed at the end. Um, I did a big roughing job that'll be coming out in about a month where I use this center, but I had to finish it out with the, the other uh, center because of, it was just too bad. So, um, like I said, I ordered a new one from KBC Tools. Um, it'll be here today, supposedly. Um, Michelle shipped it out yesterday, so if you're interested in the good live centers, KBC Tools has them. Um, just uh, call them up and, I mean, their prices are very good on them. Very happy with their service, their quick shipping. So, KBC Tools has been a, a, a great asset here in the shop. Now, moving on to the questions and comments. Um, there were a lot of really good comments and questions on this video. Um, and I'm gonna start with, there were several questions and comments about why not build up them discs with weld. Well, that's, welding is not always the option. It is not always a good option. And there's gonna be a few videos coming up where I'm gonna explain that in more detail, get into that further but there are certain jobs that you just should not weld up. Um, and this being AR plate is one of them. You should not build this up with, because otherwise you're gonna look at uh, having to do some heat treatment afterwards. Um, you know, there's, there's different processes to it. It would not work. It would just be a bad failure. In, in that case, if they needed the full size, the best option is to start over completely and make a whole new roller. So. Welding is never always the best option. It usually isn't a good option either. So um, there is a job here at the shop right now from another YouTuber um, that we will be getting to at some point. Um, it's gonna be a ways off. We gotta formulate a plan on it. Um, I haven't announced it. He hasn't announced it really where it went. Um, there is hints in his video of where it went, but um, we are gonna formulate a plan and then we're gonna get together and do a video where we talk about the plan of attack on that and that one is definitely one that cannot be welded up so um, stick around the channel for that that'll be a good video so um, there were questions about you know by taking the diameter down does it cause problems well no you just adjust the it's all adjustable you just adjust the tension on the pulley so uh, a lot of a lot of good questions about crowning how crowning works and Crowning is, is, is something that goes way back to the flat belt days um, and it's something I'm very familiar with and it's all belt pulleys, flat belt pulleys have a slight crown to them. So the center is higher than the outside, kind of like a road. A road has got a crown to it. Um, and that's mostly to shed the water and stuff and keep you from drifting into the other lane. But um, a pulley, when you tension that belt, it kind of holds it centered. That's why it's crowned. So when you pull that belt tight on that pulley, it's gonna pull tight in the middle and it's gonna kind of hold it there. It'll shift a little bit, but it's gonna keep itself very centered. And that's why you put the crown on them. There were a lot of suggestions on ways to combat the, the chatter and I, I did try a lot of them off camera. Um, on a, I did a set of these rollers back a while, um, actually when the center was still good, and it still did the chatter. Not as bad then, but it still had chatter. So the thing that, there was several of them that were you know, putting a band on it, uh, putting a steady rest um, in there, and the steady rest I think would have worked. It would have been a little tight to get my steady in there, and I would have put it down on the shaft itself. Um, I could have put it, the big one steady on the, the, the plate, um, possibly that would have worked. Um, but I thought about doing that. I just thought that's, that's more time um, and setup and stuff and it's, let's just get this job done. So by doing it the way I did it, taking the, the bearing off because they were gonna have to replace the bearings anyway. Um, they told me that. I don't know why they didn't take both bearings off. That's just 
I don't know. But taking the bearing off, so flipping it around was definitely the best option, um, and it worked out well. Like I said, some people had commented about cutting towards the weld and away from the weld and you know different things, and, and would it have been better had the plate been welded on both sides? I believe yes. I think that would have actually um, helped a lot with the chatter. Um, had the plates been a very tight fit to the shaft, like a one thou slip fit um, before they were welded, I think that would have helped as well because there would have been rust jacking in there that would have locked it in. Um, there's a lot of things that I think could have been better about these, these uh, conveyor rollers. So uh, a lot of good questions and comments. Um, one, one comment sticks out though, um, and, and it's just an, un I'm not picking on the guy at all in, in any way, shape or form, but it's kind of an uneducated or misconceptions in the world. Um, he had said something about wood speeding it up much faster have helped with the chatter because CNC machines run much faster. And the answer to that is an absolutely no. Um, CNC machines run much faster mostly because they're smaller. They're doing smaller parts. They're not doing intricate big parts like that. The bigger you get in diameter, the slower you got to run for surface feet per minute. So it, the size and everything all correlates. It has nothing to do with the type of machine. A CNC is nothing more than a manual machine with a computer control. Nothing more, well, and a, and a fancy cabinet so you can't get near it. Because, you know, well, I'm not gonna get into that, my, my theories here, but it's, it's the same machine, same exact machine, just controlled by a computer and protected by cabinets. So that would not have cured the problem at all. Um, I tried speeding it up a little bit um, past what I felt was a good surface feet per minute on the, on the diameter and it just, I, it wasn't any better, it didn't help. So I'm not, that would never have cured it. So uh, just, this is something that I've dealt with for years is people un, uneducated um, and unknowing and it, I don't fault the guy at all. Again, it's, it's just the way the world is when it comes to machining. They, they all think, um, you know, I've, I've had people call me up, they needed a hole drilled in a, in a piece of, you know, bar stock, a quarter inch hole, and they told me I couldn't do the job because I didn't have CNC. That's bullshit. That's complete bullshit. So um, this is the kind of crap I deal with on a daily basis as a manual only machine shop, is the, the, the general public's lack of knowledge. Um, you know, they see stuff on the internet and they think it's, it's the word of God, but it's really not. So uh, I'm going to walk away from this conversation right now. We're not going to go any deeper. That's just personal, personal things I've dealt with over the years. So, um, there were a few suggestions of putting machinist jacks or rubber between the, the discs and that could work. My only concern with like a machinist jack is that is a solid piece that would be rotating. And if it worked loose, where would that rotating piece go? Probably right there or right there. So um, depending on where you're standing or right over there. So no, that's not a good idea. I just, I didn't like that idea. Rubber clamped in there with a hose clamp or something between the plates, that may have worked. But again, like I said, the whole problem I was having was my live center. Um, and I bet you, I bet you I get this job again here in the next year on a, um, they've got several of these plants and they're going to cycle them through as, as needed. Um, I bet you the new center, it won't chatter. It won't chatter hardly at all. So I think that'll cure all my problems there. There were some questions about the, uh, wobbling of the discs and the poor build quality of that, that roller. And I do agree. There was a lot of things on that roller that were bad design. Um, poorly built, but again, I didn't build it. Um, and that's something that I will be quoting for this customer in the future is if we need to build new ones, I'll, I'll quote them out and we'll do them correctly. Um, but like I said earlier, um, fitting that disc tighter to the shaft, I think would cure a lot of their problems. Um, well, a lot of the problems with a lot of the problems with that thing. So. Fitting it tighter to the disc, it would go on straighter. Welding both sides, possibly. Um, 
staggered welds, not weld all the way around. That's something you don't really want to do, especially on a high carbon um, shaft. That should be a 1045 shaft. I don't believe it was 1018. So um, there's, there's a lot of ways to build those that would be so much better and could increase the longevity of them. Um, as it is, there was some questions about what's the lifespan of those. Um, some of those had been in service five or 10 years. So to get to that point was, was you know, it, it's seasonal, it's an asphalt plant, but still it sees a lot of use and a lot of abuse. And um, you know, there's a lot of material hitting it. Um, there was comments and questions about why the, they were plates like that. And that was to keep material from building up and plugging them up. It just drops out. Um, so we had a lot of really good questions and comments on this video, and I hope I addressed them all. I hope, hope this video helped you with chatter. I mean, speeding it up, slowing it down, deeper cuts, lighter cuts. Um, there's all things to try. But as my situation was, is check your live center. That was my whole problem. I just crazy, crazy that that was it. But um, and a very annoying of all things, because like I said, that was not a cheap center that I bought in the first place. And the, the new Skoda is a little bit more, but it'll be worth the money because it is a much better center, much better build. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I answered a lot of the questions. I uh, don't think there was much beyond that um, other than when you bring stuff to a machine shop, clean it first. You don't want to pay my rate to clean it. You want to pay, you know, your helps rate. So clean it first because I have to bill you the same whether it goes in a machine or not. If, I, if I'm cleaning it, I have to bill you for my machine time. If, uh, if it's clean first, then it saves you, you know, an hour, two hours. So definitely clean your parts first. Um, I've always preached this in my videos and preached this to the world. Bring it in clean. It'll help you out in the end on your bill. So... With that, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope I answered all the questions. And until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.